Hey book nerds, I'm Travis and this is Travis Reads Books. I'm doing another book tag today. This time it's the Sisterhood of the World tag. Uh, this version of the Sisterhood of the World tag originated from Hardback Hoarder and I found it on James Chatham's channel. I'll link to both those in the description below. Question one. What is your current favorite song? Pick a book that relates to it. My current favorite song is The Sound of Silence. A book that relates to it is The Knife of Never Letting Go, which is all about noise. It's about a world where everyone can hear everyone else's thoughts. And there's so much noise it can be hard to push through and discover the truth of any situation. All the characters are desperate to find a little bit of quiet. Number two, give an LGBTQ plus slash diverse book recommendation. I recommend If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. Uh, this is a really fantastic book about uh, a trans girl starting at a new school where nobody knows her secret. And what's really great about it isn't that it's a super accurate representation of life as a transsexual teen. So the book isn't so much trying to tell you what it's like to be a trans teen. It's just telling you a good fairy tale story. And I think that we need more fairy tale stories with gay, trans, or other diverse characters. Number three, who is your favorite morally gray character? I like The Man from The Road by Cormac McCarthy. The man whose name we never actually find out. I think he cares about his son more than anything, and he will do anything to protect him. And a few times we see in the book the lengths he's willing to go to protect his son, and we see he will do almost anything, maybe even anything, to protect the boy. I think he's inarguably a good man, but I think he's willing to do bad things. Question four. Biggest pet peeve with books could be tropes, writing, book two, book designs, etc. I hate adverbs. Adverbs are the most overused writing technique in the world. 99% of the time, they are completely unnecessary. This character whispered quietly. Yes, of course he whispered quietly. That's what whispering means. Or this character yelled loudly. What other way is there to yell? There are a few cases where adverbs are useful in describing the way an action is carried out, but the vast majority of the time, um, through common sense or through contextual clues, you could figure that information out on your own, making an adverb a completely redundant waste of space on the page. Number five, what is your favorite poem? I don't read much poetry. Uh, almost none, in fact, but I really enjoyed Beowulf, and that definitely counts as a poem, albeit a very big one. Last book you DNF'd and why? I Hunt Killers by Barry Liga, and I've actually tried on three different occasions uh, to read this book, because a number of people I've seen have rated it highly, or it's gotten a lot of critical acclaim. Um, but I just cannot get into it at all. I find the writing very poor and almost juvenile, uh, unrealistic, uh, very inauthentic sounding voice. Uh, I really disliked it every time I tried to read it, and I think I've finally given up entirely. Number seven, what does a five-star book have to have for you? A good ending. More than anything else, an ending is important for me because A, uh, I almost always hate endings. I think they're almost never done well. Uh, and B, because that's the thing you remember. When the book is done, it's the freshest thing on your mind. And when you're going to Goodreads to give it that star rating, unless you wisely wait a day or two, as most people probably should, um, but if you don't, then the thing you're remembering is how it ended. So if it ended, on a particularly good note, then that's going to affect your rating. That's the way the book is going to be remembered in your mind. Number eight, if you had to get a bookish tattoo, what, who would it be of? Um, I would probably get a semicolon or an ampersand or maybe quotation marks. 
Number nine, if you had to pick one book to read forever, what would it be? I would pick Ulysses by James Joyce, even though I've tried to read it and didn't particularly enjoy it. James Joyce has said he's hidden enough literary references to keep critics reading Ulysses for the next hundred years. So I think there would be a lot to unpack there, and no matter how many times I reread it, I would probably continue to find something new. So even though right now I have no interest in reading it, if I could only read one more book for the rest of my life, I think I could get quite a few interesting readings out of Ulysses. If you're wondering what's in my cup today, it is Starbucks Via Instant Iced Coffee. It's pretty good for instant coffee, but it's a little gritty and a little too sweet. Question 10. Funko Pops asked you to design their newest line. What characters would you love to see made into Funko Pops? I would like to see Funko Pops based on children's books uh, and the characters from them. I think there's so many great characters that would make great Funko Pops. Um, for instance, the bear from I Want My Hat Back, or the Gruffalo, or Scaredy Squirrel would be a great pop. Well, that was the Sisterhood of the World tag. I hope it's okay that I did it, not being a sister, but like I said, I found it on James Chatham's channel, so I think it's okay for me to do it, even though I'm a dude. If you liked the video, be sure and hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, it would be great if you subscribed so you could see all my videos in the future. And thanks for watching. Love and respect. See you next time.